This is Cerebral Cinema. Movies of the Mind. Petri Wine brings you... Basil Rathbone and Nigel Bruce in the new adventures of Sherlock Holmes. The Petri family, the family that took time to bring you good wine, invite you to listen to Dr. Watson tell us another exciting adventure he shared with his old friend, that brilliant detective... Sherlock Holmes. And say, while you lend an ear to the good doctor, you'll get a lot of pleasure out of a glass of rich, ruby red Petri California port. Just sit back and sip that Petri port leisurely. There's a wine that's just perfect after dinner. A wine that really goes with storytelling and conversation. Petri port is as rich in flavor as it is in color. And what a flavor. Full, hearty, and delicious. Well, I can't think of a better way to express your hospitality than to offer your friends a glass of good Petri port. Serve that Petri port alone, or serve it with fruit or nuts, or with cake or sandwiches. No matter how you serve it, you can serve that Petri port proudly, because the name Petri is the proudest name in the history of American wine. Well, here we are once again keeping our weekly date with Dr. Watson. Good evening, Doctor. Good evening, Mr. Bartell. Come in and join me. As you see, the puppies have been keeping your chair warm for you. <laughs> here, shove them off. <laughs> no, nah, Doctor, I don't want to disturb them. They look much too comfortable. I'll sit over here, thanks. There's tobacco in the jar beside you, cigarettes in the box, and some excellent port on the sideboard, so make yourself at home. Thanks, Doctor. Are you all ready with tonight's new Sherlock Holmes adventure? Yes, Mr. Bartell, though I'm afraid after all these years it's going to be a little hard for me to recapture for you the spirit of the story. Uh, last week you told us that a band of gypsies played a prominent part in the adventure. Yes, they did indeed. And it was amid that colorful atmosphere that my story begins. It was in the autumn of 1890, my old friend Sherlock Holmes had persuaded me to leave the comforts of my domestic fireside for a few days and to accompany him to the tiny village of Bragston on the Marsh in the heart of the Norfolk Fen district. What took Sherlock Holmes up there, Doctor? I'm afraid that at the time we left London, Mr. Bartell, he concealed his true purpose from me, saying only that he wanted friendly companionship and a strong right arm. Not until later did I learn that he was then on the track of one of the last clues that led to the confining of the Moriarty gang. But to, to get on with my story. We arrived at Bragston on the Marsh and settled ourselves in the village inn. And after an early dinner, we strolled across the fields to the gypsy fair that was encamped nearby. It was a colourful sight, Mr. Bartell. Naphtha flares lighted a group of tents and caravans dotted round the edge of the marsh. And as gold earring gypsy girls told fortunes and danced, swarthy gypsy men played on their violins the haunting melodies of their ancestors. We watched the side shows for a few moments and then strolled towards the centre of the gypsy encampment. It seems only like yesterday, Mr. Bartell, as Holmes turned to me and said... Far cry from Baker Street, isn't it, Watson? Yes, indeed. Just the same, Holmes. I'm convinced that you're not here purely for a holiday. You're on the trail of, of some criminal. No, Jab, I'm on the trail of a clue. A clue, if I find it, may lead to uh, the confounding of the Moriarty gang. Holmes, can't you be a little more explicit? After all, I left my wife in my practice without asking any questions. Surely now we're up here, you can let me know what's afoot. Very well, old fellow. I'm searching for a young gypsy by the name of Pyramus Hearn. He disappeared recently from London, and it's vital that I find him. I know that he can give me some essential information on our old enemy, Professor Moriarty. And you're expecting to find the gypsy here? I hope to get news of him, at least. His father, Jasper Hearn, is um, head of this particular encampment. Well, why don't you ask if you can see him? Just what I'm about to do, my dear fellow. Well, here comes the gypsy now. I'll ask him. All right. Oh, uh, excuse me. You speak to me, Gorcho? Uh, can you tell me where I might find Mr. Jasper Hearn? What you want with Jasper Hearn? I have a message for his son, Pyramus. That is different. Jasper Hearn stands in the booth yonder. He is the Timberline Club. Thimble Angler, uh, he's the gentleman engaged um, in an interesting exhibition of skill involving three thimbles and a pea. Uh, what our American cousins refer to, I understand, as uh, the old show dame. Let's stroll over there, shall we, old fellow? If you would wish to talk to Jasper, it would be better to wait until he is finished. A Thimble Angler needs all his wits about. No, Joe, look at that stunning girl in the tent over there. Who, who, who's she? Her there is penning the rice tuckering. That is Lydia. Lydia Pentel Excuse me, I shall tell Jasper to expect you later. I can't understand a word they say, Holmes. Telling the what? <laughs> At last, my dear fellow, you can appreciate 
how I have felt at times. But at least their words are clear, even, not, um, even if the sense is not, uh, to someone who is unfamiliar with the Romany language. I don't know why you keep hinting that I'm hard to understand. No one else ever complains of it. <laughs> In any case, what does penning the thing about mean? Uh, well, if I remember rightly, penning duckerin is telling fortunes. And from the sound of things, Lydia Pentelangro is um, not greatly pleased with the duckerin she penned. No more. Lydia can tell no more fortune. Come on, Watson. Let's see what the trouble is. What do you mean? You must finish it. That's all it, my dear. If the young lady doesn't want to tell my fortune... Rubbish. You cross her palm with silver. She's taking money under false pretenses. Here, I give you your silver back. Lydia has never taken money under false pretenses. Nor has she told the future when she does not wish to. Goodbye to you. The insolence of these gypsies is intolerable. If I had my way, they'd be run out of the county. Now, now my dear, don't get so excited. The poor girl's probably... Good evening. Uh, Major Treadgold, isn't it? Huh? I don't think I have the pleasure of your... Oh, dear me. It's Mr. Sherlock Holmes. Yes, sir. Well, bless my soul. Haven't seen you since that last meeting of the Geographical Society. Oh, I I'd like you to meet my wife. How do you do, Mrs. Treadgold? How do you do? And this is my friend, Dr. Watson. Uh, how do you do? do? And what brings you up to this part of England, uh, Holmes? Are you hot on the trail of some desperate <laughs> criminal? Dear me, no. Dr. Watson and I are taking a little holiday, and uh, you and your wife? We live here in the manor house. Well, you're very lucky. It's a beautiful part of the country, Mrs. Treadgold. I hate it. I was born and brought up in London. I'm never really happy outside the city. Yes, Oliver's is not one for the peace of the countryside, I'm afraid. Well, well, perhaps we'll get back there. It's a little difficult these days, you know. We've got the boy to consider. Boy? Your, your son, sir? Uh, my dead brother's son, Doctor. We have no children. My little nephew's only four years old, you see, and I'm his guardian, as well as being executor of his estates up here. So you can understand it would be difficult for us to get back to London. It's only difficult because you put the child's happiness before mine, Arthur. Oh, no, no, Olive. You know I have to watch his interests up here. After all, when he comes of age, he'll be one of the richest young men in Norfolk. Yes, and with money that should have come to us. In any case, Arthur, if we do have to live up here, I'd find it more tolerable if you'd keep this gypsy's come off the estate. You seem to have taken a, a violent dislike to the gypsies, Mrs. Tritgold. May I ask why? Oh, they persecute us. They steal our sheep, they break our windows. And just the other day, they wantonly led our prize pig into the Bragstone quagmire and let the beast perish. Why should they single you out for persecution like this, do you suppose? Oh, I can't imagine. I've always tried to be nice to them. Too nice, Arthur. That's your trouble. Well, I have a very good reason for humoring them, my dear. You see, Holmes, I've always been afraid they may carry this feud so far that they'll even hurt the baby. Uh, Olive, my dear, I, I wonder if you'd go ahead and wait for me in the carriage. It's getting rather chilly. I'll join you in a moment. Very well, Arthur, but don't keep me waiting long. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, Good night, Mr. Uh, 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 let's stroll away from the camp, shall we? Uh, I've got something very important to tell you. Something I didn't like to say in front of Olive. The gypsies have threatened to kidnap our boy. Prince Scott, how, how shocking. Uh, what form did their threat take, sir? Uh, this letter. I found it pinned on the frame of my dressing room mirror when I went up after dinner tonight. Let me see it, will you please? Well, what does it say, Holmes? A Romany rye. A Romany rye? Won't take your insults forever, Major and Mrs. High and Mighty. Watch out for the treadgold air. The Bragstone quagmire would make a nice finishing school for him. Romany Rye? What, what's that mean? Well, it's their own term, meaning gypsy. Mr. Holmes, what shall I do? Uh, Major Treadgold, I can... <coughs> Great heavens! That shot just missed me. Where the blazes have come from? I can't see a soul. They have come from behind any one of those caravans ahead of us. And if you want to direct evidence, gentlemen, this is it. That is the first open attempt on my life. Holmes, what extraordinary luck for me that you're in the neighborhood. I'll pay you any fee you name to handle this it business. It seems to me that this is a job for the police. I don't want to go to them. Well, why not, sir? Well, I'm afraid that these attacks may stem from some injustice to the gypsies committed by my late brother. If that were so, I wouldn't wish to expose the fact. I want this kept private. What do you say, Mr. Holmes? Very well, sir. I'll accept the case. It shall be kept private, and I promise to do everything in my power to protect the safety of the Treadgold heir. Uh, we are staying at the Rose and Crown in the village. Uh, please get in touch with me if there should be any further developments. The affair seems to be closed down for the night now, Holmes. They're turning out the naps for flares. Yes, let's stroll over to Jasper Holmes' caravan, shall we? He should be free now. Well, if he's head of this tribe, he ought to be able to tell you something about this treadgold business. Yes. Though I shall first ask him about his son, Pyramus, the man I'm looking for. I think the fact that I know his son will inspire confidence. Here we are. 
This is the caravan. That girl, Lydia Petrolenga, sitting outside. The one that was telling fortune. Yes. Uh, good evening. Who are you and what do you want? I wish to speak to Jasper Hearn. He is not here. He's gone to the marsh. Uh, when will he be back? I do not know. You bring trouble to Jasper? No, 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 my dear. This is a personal visit. Is it? <laughs> We're not after him for being a simple Engro. Or for a thinning duckering. Oh, for a gorgeous, you speak a Romany well, brother. Oh, you are a true Lavengro, master of words. Where did you learn it? From Jasper's son, Pyramus. Oh, you know Pyramus, then. <laughs> a fine boy. Oh, sit down on the grass, my friend. You may wait here for Jasper. He will be back soon. Thank you. Is that your violin lying on the steps, young lady? No, that is Jasper's Bolshov. Uh, Jasper's person, what does that? That is the Romany word for violin. You play, sir? No, no, but my friend does. So? Well, then take it, brother. The stars are bright. The night is warm. Music will be sweet. <laughs> For well, Romani Chai, I'm afraid uh, my violin playing will sound rather poor stuff. Play on, brother. Oh, brother, you play well, but Sarasati Zigoinerweisen is not the true gypsy music. I, I've heard it in London and in Budapest. They call it gypsy. But what can a gorge or know of the true heart of Romany? Wait here. I will get my own violin. Mm, charming girl, charming. But why do you keep on talking about gorgeous? Is that more of their confounded gibberish? A gorgeous old chap is uh, the term they use for anyone who is not a true gypsy. Now I will play for you the real gypsy airs. Thank you. I should appreciate it very much. But uh, before you begin, I wonder if I might ask you a question. A friend of Pyramus may ask me any question. What uh, is it? I observed you telling fortunes earlier on tonight. You refused to tell a certain gentleman's hand and gave the money back. Did you know who the gentleman was? No, brother. Nor the noisy woman with him. I refused to pen the docker in because I saw blood and violent death in his hand. Violent death that is soon to come. Violent death? Uh, Watson, old fellow, I want you to do me a favor. Yes, of course I will. Uh, what is it? I must remain here until Jasper Hearn comes back. I should like you to return to the inn. It's more than possible that we may have news from our, uh, our client before the night is out. I'll be back later. Oh, well, it's yeah. nice of you to give me the best job. Uh, good night, uh, Miss Petrino. Uh, good night. And now, please play for me a true Romany air. Very well, my friend. Listen. <laughs> Now you must play, brother. I shall make a true Bosham anger of you. Come, see if you can follow me. You have taught him well. You have made a true bushman grow of him. <laughs> he is an apt pupil, Jasper. Well, with such a teacher, it's hard to be otherwise, Mr. Hearn. That is, if one has a spark of music in one's soul. Call me Jasper, brother. You have spoken well of my son. You have talked wisely to me of things that I have not understood. Come, we shall drink wine together underneath the stars. I shall get glasses and a flag on. Jasper has taken a great fancy to you, brother. And I to him. He's a fine man. Chulako. Yes, Lydia? May I read your hand, brother? Oh, yes, of course. A strange hand. And a beautiful one. A long lifeline, and yet... I see sudden death and violence surrounding you. Now, at this moment. And in the future, I see a journey for you. Across the seas. Within a year. Beware of water that runs in the mountains. Near death will befall you, dear. More travels... More dangers. Oh, you must be careful, brother. Oh. What is it? 
Our paths are destined to cross but once. We shall not meet after this night. That makes me sad. Oh, but we shall meet again. I shall be here for some days yet. No. It says in your hand that we shall not meet again. And a hand cannot lie. Who is this that comes towards us through the moonlight? It's my friend, Dr. Watson, I think. Yes. Hello, Watson. What's wrong? Wrong, wrong. Everything's wrong. Mrs. Treadgold's waiting in a carriage. She wants you to come at once. Indeed, why? The child has been kidnapped. Major Treadgold has gone for the police, and Mrs. Treadgold is threatening to rouse the local inhabitants and come out here and burn this camp to the ground if you don't find the you child. tell Mrs. Treadgold to return home. She can do no good here. But home, Tell her, old chap, that I have the case well in hand. But how can you have? You've been out here all the time, playing your violin. Have faith in me, please, old fellow, will you? And deliver the message. Then come back here and join me, and I'll explain everything to you. Very well. I suppose you know what you're up to. Violence and trouble, brother. It is all there in your hand. Well, what must be shall be, and I wouldn't have it otherwise. But for the moment, the sky is starlit, the air is still, and the melody you played haunts me. Let's play it together again, shall we? I should like that. I should like that very much. Watson will continue his story in just a few seconds, during which time I'd like to talk specifically to the ladies, if I may, and tell you about Petri California Muscatel. Just as Petri California Port has long been known as the wine of gentlemen, Petri Muscatel has been known as the favorite of the ladies. That's because Petri Muscatel is a golden-colored wine that looks like captured sunshine and tastes as... Well, did you ever taste big, plump muscat grapes? picked when they're still misty and dew-covered? If you have, you know what to expect when you taste Petri Muscatel. The flavor of Petri Muscatel comes right from the very heart of luscious, hand-picked Muscat grapes. You couldn't ask for a more delicious wine than Muscatel. Petri Muscatel. Well, Dr. Watson, I, I must say this is a strange story you're telling us. You mean to say that the heir to the Treadgold Estates had been kidnapped, and yet Sherlock Holmes paid no yes, attention? Yes, that's what it seemed like, Mr. Bartell. I couldn't understand him. I'd never known him to be so indifferent to a case. There he sat until the early hours of the morning, as he and that girl scraped away at their violins and never said a word about the kidnapped baby. Finally, as we walked home across the fields a few hours before dawn, his mind seemed to return to the matter at hand. He spoke quietly... And yet there was a note of suppressed excitement in his voice. What's my dear fellow? You're angry with me, aren't you? No, no, Holmes, I must say, but I, I'm, I'm confused. That girl seems to have bewitched you. Have you forgotten that you accepted the job of guarding the tread gold heir and that the child was kidnapped tonight? No, I'm fully aware of fact. Holmes, for heaven's sake, stop being so infernally matter of fact. What's come over with you? Oh, possibly it's the mood of this mild autumn night. It is indeed a St. Martin summer. <laughs> so much so that I've... Uh... I left my coat and just took a cap behind me at the encampment. Let's go back, shall we? And incidentally, when we get there, I can set your mind at rest by showing you the kidnapped child. You mean you know where it is? Certainly. It's, uh, in the camp. Then the gypsies did steal it. No, my dear fellow. I did. What? This is one of those occasions when you absolutely infuriate me, Holmes. If you must keep me up half the night while you have a fitting contact with a gypsy girl, at least of all you can do is tell me what's going on. You say you stole the child yourself. In heaven's name, why? Because the threatening note to Major Treadgold was so obviously a fraud. Oh, why do you say that? You will remember that the letter began, A Romany Rye will not take your insults forever. Now, a Romany Rye, despite what Major Treadgold said, does not mean a gypsy, but a man who knows about gypsy law. It is a term no true gypsy would apply to himself. He would use the expression, Romany child. So it was obvious from the beginning that no gypsy threatened the child. Now, uh... Who else had a motive for harming it? Well, Major Treadgold, because he stood to inherit the estate. Yes, or his wife. It's quite obvious that she has no liking for our present life, and the child is an obstacle to a new one. With the child kidnapped and later made away with, obviously they both stood to gain a great many of the things they wanted. Yes, Joe, you're right. And whoever the culprit is took the precaution of pinning the blame in advance on the unfortunate gypsies by writing the false kidnapping note. Wait a minute, but... 
How about the shot that was fired at us tonight as we walked with Major Treadgold? Probably fired by an accomplice to the plot in order to give authenticity to the supposed danger. And the child is now in the gypsy encampment. Yes, I, um, I promised that I would protect the Treadgold heir, and so I arranged with Jasper Hearn to have the boy kidnapped for his own safety. But if anyone should find the child, they'll say the gypsies deliberately stole him. Oh, I'm quite certain that uh, before that occasion arises, old chap, the criminal will have shown his or her hand. Come on, old fellow. Put your best foot forward. It's a long way back to the camp yet, and it's nearly dawn. You have come back, brother. You wish to spend the remainder of the night in the encampment? No, thank you, Jasper. I just came back with my cap and coat. It was <laughs> so warm tonight, and I forgot about them, and I started to walk home without them. I will find them for you. Oh, we found this message for you soon after you had left. It was pinned to the door of the caravan. I do not know how it got there. I will search for your coat and cap. Another message? What does it say, Holmes? Never trust a Romany Rye. Uh-huh. The same mistake again, Watson. Your plans have been betrayed. For proof, meet me at the Bragstone Quagmire at dawn. It's a trap, Holmes. Obviously. We must spring it with caution. I cannot uh, find your coat or your cap, Rutter. It has vanished. Vanished? May I speak to Lydia? That is a strange thing, too. Lydia has gone also. She's gone. Tell me, Jasper, did she read this note? Yes, she did. She could not help reading it. Then she, too, realized it was a trap. She went out in my coat and dear stocking hat to keep the appointment for me. Holmes, who's go after her? Jasper, call out the Romany Charles. There's a devil waiting to be caught in the Braxton quagmire. <laughs> How much further to the quagmire, Jasper? 200 yards. No more. There's Lydia. There she is. And she's dressed in my dear stocking hat and coat, walking into the trap that was set for me. Lydia! Lydia! They got her. Look, look. She's stumbled. She's fallen. I'll go to her, Watson. Jasper, get that devil who staged this fiendish plot. I have a score to settle with him. Do not worry, brother. The score will be settled. Follow me, doctor. Right you are. I'm right behind you. Lydia! Lydia! Jela Combs. I was wrong. We do meet again. Your hand lied to me. Oh, Lydia. You're wounded. What can I do for you? There is nothing you can do, brother. No one can help me now. There is little pain. There is little time. Please, hold my hand. There. Tell me, Lydia. Did you see who fired the shot? Yes. It was the man whose fortune I told today. The man with the noisy wife. Major Treadgold! Jasper and the men will take care of him. <laughs> there is one thing I wish to tell you, brother. Yes? Our short meeting has brought me happiness. I should like to think I can leave you something so that you will not forget me. I shall always remember you, Lydia. Always. You gave your life for mine. There is one thing of mine that I wish you to have. It will remind you of me. What is it? My violin. It brought us together. I should like you to have it, brother. <coughs> Lydia. Do not be sad. It is good. My life for yours. You will give help to many people. It is in your hand. Goodbye. Oshimengro. Dreadful. Dreadful. The gypsies surrounded Major Treadgold. They forced him back into the Braxton quagmire. I tried to pull him out, but I couldn't do it single-handed. I'm not sorry, Watson. Jasper, you know that Lydia is dead? Yes, I know it. The gypsies knew it, too. That is why you were a single-handed doctor in your attempts to save the murderer. No Romany child would raise a finger to help him. Yes, I can understand that, but great Scott, man, if you'd seen his face as the quaking mud... Sucked him under. Lydia's death was less dramatic, but equally moving, I assure you. Sherlock Holmes, I met you less than five hours ago. You have saved my tribe from a devilish plot that would have blackened their names. A plot that would have driven them from the countryside. What can I do in return? Two things. First, tell me where I may reach your son, Pyramus. 
This address is in this sealed envelope, Rutter. Thank you. What else may I do for you? As Lydia died, she willed me one gift for remembrance. And what was that gift, Rutter? A violin. Of course. Here. Here it is. She huh. told me I might become a true Boshomingro. Let's see if I can recapture the melody once more. very strange story. A very fascinating one. But tell me, do, do you really believe that gypsies can tell your fortune by reading the palm of your hand? Oh, frankly, I don't know, Mr. Bartell. Perhaps they can. Perhaps it's coincidence. And then again, maybe some gypsy women have a heightened sense of intuition. You know, a woman's intuition can be an extraordinary thing. Yeah, so my wife keeps telling me. Uh, of course, I have a kind of intuition myself. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Every time I see a bottle of wine with the name Petri on the label, my intuition tells me I'm going to like it. And I always do, too. Mr. Bartell, if ever I saw a man with a one-track mind, you're that man. Thank you, Doctor. As long as my one-track is Petri, I can't miss. Because nobody can miss with Petri wine. What other wine has such tradition, such a story behind it? Petri wine is made by a family. The Petri family. They've owned and operated their own business ever since its inception, back in the 1800s. The Petri family has been making good wine for generations. And they've been handing on down in the family, from father to son, from father to son, the fine art of turning luscious, sun-ripened grapes into fragrant, delicious wine. And that sure adds up to a lot of experience. You can just bet your last dollar that no matter what kind of wine you want, when you ask for a Petri wine, you're asking for good wine. Because Petri took time to bring you good wine. Well, Dr. Watson, what story are you planning to tell us next week? Next week, Mr. Bartell, I'm going to tell you of a strange adventure that Sherlock Holmes and I had in the east end of London. It concerns five nephews, an eccentric will, and a dead man's watch that gave us the clue to murder. <laughs> Tonight's Sherlock Holmes adventure was written by Dennis Green and Anthony Boucher and was suggested by an incident in the Sir Arthur Conan Doyle story, The Adventure of the Red Circle. Music is by Dean Fostler. Mr. Rathbone appears through the courtesy of Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer and Mr. Bruce through the courtesy of Universal Pictures. They are now starring in the Sherlock Holmes series. Petri Wine Company of San Francisco, California, invites you to tune in again next week, same time, same station. Sherlock Holmes comes to you from our Hollywood studio. This is Harry Bartell saying goodnight for the Petri family. For a solid hour of exciting mystery dramas, listen every Monday on most of these same stations at 8 o'clock to Michael Shane, followed immediately by Sherlock Holmes. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Cerebral Cinema hopes you have enjoyed this movie of the mind.